Hey everybody, this is Andrew Benjamin with MMASucker.com. With me, I've got Jordan Black Lion Drayton, who will be fighting this Saturday in an amateur kickboxing event in the Bronx, New York City. Uh, Jordan, thank you very much for uh, talking to us. I really appreciate it. Hi, Alex. How are you? Thank you for having me. Um, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, who are you? Uh, how you got started in MMA? Tell us the beginnings of your story. Uh, well, my, my name is Jordan Drayton. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm 23 years old as of right now. Uh, I started uh, kickboxing. Well, I started off boxing as a kid because uh, my older brother, I, I was bullied a lot in, in school and I was having a lot of issues growing up. So my older brother, uh, he was into a lot of watching boxing and combat sports. So, you know, he started to teach me how to uh, defend myself. And uh, it, it started to help me become a better individual, I'd say. Then uh, one day uh, I started to have like, a, I was growing up, like I said, I had a lot of issues growing up, um, substance abuse issues, uh, issues at home, uh, not fitting in at school. So one day uh, I was drinking with some, uh, some of my friends. I think I was about 15 years old. And I was walking by uh, a kickboxing gym and I seen a, uh, I think, a. Uh, I think the guy was in the Air Force. He was about 6'2". I seen him uh, kickboxing with somebody. And I had told my friends, you know, like, yeah, let's go in there. And, you know, <laughs> you know, as a joke, I was like, you know, let's go in there and maybe, you know, let's beat this guy up, you know, let's, <laughs> let's go in there and have some fun or whatever. And, you know, they, they didn't, they was like, ah, oh, you know, they made jokes about it and whatnot, but they didn't actually want to go uh, into the gym. So I, I ended up going in by myself I don't know what for what reason I just felt like it's something I really wanted to do you know look cool what the guy was doing so I ended up going in the gym and asking the uh, trainer there if I can spar with this guy and he told he asked me if I ever had any experience and I told him you know yeah I have some slight boxing experience you know because my older brother was teaching me amateur boxing at the time and I was uh, I was doing really well competing wise and so you know I wanted to see what it would be like to fight somebody in the different martial arts and the guy, you know, he totally <laughs> he kicked my ass. Uh, he beat me pretty bad. He beat me up pretty bad. And um, I think he knew I was drinking and whatnot. And and the, the trainer told me uh, to come back the next day. You know, he told me to come back and train. And, you know, since then, I've never stopped training. And so New York, people who, people who, start, who are MMA fighters from New York, it's an interesting because uh, New York was one of the last places to uh, unban or, or, or legalize MMA. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you did you start training in MMA after the ban was lifted? Uh, I think no. I think I started training in MMA before the ban was lifted uh, because I when I was doing the kickboxing there. When I came back the next day, uh, he ended up allowing me to learn uh, jujitsu and wrestling also because that gym was a full mixed martial arts gym. It wasn't just a kickboxing gym. And I started doing jujitsu, then I started wrestling and I just started off doing the kickboxing at first because I wasn't too good at wrestling and the grappling. And it's something I couldn't really wrap my head around at first. You know, like human anatomy is, isn't so common to people. It's something that you really need to be taught. Uh, so I ended up just doing kickboxing at first. And then I started, once I, I ended up in a car accident sometime back and migrated into a different gym where I got really serious about jujitsu and wrestling. And that's where I decided to uh, pursue MMA. Maya Vyasco, where do you train out? What, what is your current uh, camp right now? Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm training on the Enigma BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Long Island City. It's in Astoria on 34th Avenue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, I, I, you know, in New York City, there, it, there's, I, I'll definitely say there's a lot of MMA gyms. Um, some good, some bad, some of the world. What made, what made Enigma a uh, good choice to, uh, to uh, heighten, to, to, uh, to uh, help, uh, help your career? Well, I, I found Enigma after I found this first gym. Uh, this first gym, I had uh, one kickboxing fight there. Like it was, a, I think, a, I think, a, I think it was a sparring event or something of the sort. And after a while, I started to learn a little bit about the uh, the gym and the uh, trainer there. And 
they had some stuff going on there I wasn't really, you know, I didn't really approve of. And I ended up, uh, fortunately, I ended up getting in a car accident where I tore some muscles in my shoulder and I had to take like a year and a half off. And during that year and a half off, I was, like I said, I was still dealing with a lot of issues uh, growing up. You know, at the time I was in high school, I believe. And uh, I was, you know, using a lot of drugs, you know, uh, being in the wrong crowds, wrong area, you know. Uh, in New York City, you know, definitely in Brooklyn where I grow up, you know, there's a lot of bad influences, a lot of uh, bad neighborhoods. I, I, would, I wouldn't say uh, bad, but a lot of people who didn't grow up with proper guidance, which influences other people to do the wrong things, I would say. And, you know, I got mixed up in that crowd and, and trying to figure out who I was. Um, after doing the, uh, the martial arts for a while, I ended up really finding some solitude in it. And I began to start like helping others. Uh, like learn how to do kickboxing and, and uh, martial arts and just boxing in my neighborhood. And then I met this guy who, who told me that he had a gym in Long Island City. I think I was about 16 at the time and uh, that he was having some sparring event there. So I went down to the gym with him. He told me that he thought it would be really well for me. And that's where I met a, uh, that's where I met the team that I'm with now. And we've been on like ever since uh, training every single day all the time. Uh, Eric Eric Claros, he's the uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt instructor at Enigma. Uh, Robert Ramos is uh, another uh, coach there. Uh, Pablo, uh, a kickboxing instructor, one of my main kickboxing instructors. And then I have my overall strength and conditioning coach who was the first person I found when I walked into the gym and he he saw something in me and said, you know, you, you know, you seem like a very smart kid, you know, you're just dealing with a lot and you should come by and continue to train, you know? Um, and I didn't have any money, you know, I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything to really offer this guy, but he, he looked at me and he said, you know, I, I think you're gonna do well in this sport and you should just continue to train. It'll keep your mind, you know, I, keep you out of trouble and it'll keep your mind in the right place. And, you know, uh, he allowed me to come back every day. Ever since then, I just continued to train and I just haven't been able to stop. <laughs> so tell us what's been like also training during the pandemic was has your training been stunted I mean I mean at the beginning you know March when all the gyms were closed but you know some gyms have opened right uh, right yes yeah, uh, some some under the un, unofficially open some are uh, are not even operating still some are people are doing it out of the garage what have you been doing uh training wise during this whole thing well, yeah, the, 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 the COVID definitely affected a, a lot. Uh, definitely uh, competing wise, I had a, uh, I was supposed to compete in a um, MMA fight last, I think the beginning of this year and uh, a Naga event, uh, uh, North Association of Grappling Association or something like that for Jiu Jitsu. And I couldn't do it because of COVID. Uh, a lot of the venues were shut down. A lot of the promotion events were shut down. Um, the gym itself was shut down and still is closed as of right now. And uh, what I've been doing is just, uh, I've been basically refining a lot of things that I've been taught. Me and my, uh, the regular guys that I've already started with at the gym, the first three people I started off at the gym with, you know, we constantly meet up every day and we, we help each other stay sharp. We do a lot of uh, pad work, we go to the gym, we lift weights, uh, we, we, uh, we travel out, you know, uh, we do the seminars and we constantly soak in, you know, what we can and just basically really refining what we learned because we learned a lot of information and I feel like the foundation is, is very important, you know, having a strong base in martial arts. So just having the basics down, we've been very, very focused on that as of lately. Tell me, uh, who, some, who are some fighters that you um that inspire you um and then and any whether it's boxing kickboxing mma who are the but who are the ones who who you find the most that influence you the most uh in boxing i like uh this guy uh vasily lomachenko he's he's a very very uh i like this he's a very defensive fighter i think and counter counter puncher his footwork is amazing. His defensive skills is amazing. Like uh, it's, it's outstanding, uh, almost. And I, I really, I really like the way he uh, he fights, his style of fighting, the way he expresses himself. Um, besides that, I I personally haven't 
watch too many fights, unfortunately. Um, I do like some of the greats, like I would say, like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson. Uh, as far as martial arts, mixed martial arts, I actually don't uh, watch too many uh, fights, actually, <laughs> funny enough. Um, so I, I try not to really look up to too many people or like follow too many people because I feel like everybody's just trying to be the best version of themselves. And for me, this sport is about like uh, expressing myself, you know, and this is a way that is easy for me to express myself. So I want to do that the best way possible, if you understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm just, uh, let's talk about this, uh, this kickboxing fight that you have on Saturday. Is this the, is this the first, uh, I guess, com competition that you've been involved in, in, in all of 2020? Yeah, actually, yes, it, it has been. Uh, I, I tore an ACL. I tore my ACL in the ending of last year, November, and uh, I was recovering about earlier this year. And it was just uh, <laughs> the last year and a half since, because uh, the, the last time I fought was in 2018, I believe, the end of the year, in a main event in ECF. And after that, I had a, a, a little few injuries and some, I was learning a lot of things outside of fighting and being away from the gym, I would say uh, a lot of lessons I had to learn uh, that just not just being in the gym, you know, cause I was in the gym a lot of times uh, throughout the throughout the week, throughout the day, I was practically almost living in the gym, you know? And I, I would be there, I would train eight, seven hours a day, go home and then just constantly, you know, repeat it because I really love this sport. And uh, so, not being able to be in the gym, it kind of forced me to kind of really adapt to just being outside and working and not working in the gym because I was also working in the gym and, and you know, help teach martial arts and uh, self-defense and jujitsu with my coaches. And, you know, the, the gym's closing up. I had to find another job for, you know, the time being uh, after a few months. And I had to learn a lot of uh, just just adapting to just being back out here, you know, and utilizing what I learned uh, in martial arts overall. Well, since uh, since you did start off and uh, uh, boxing, kind of going to a kick uh, a kickboxing match, probably you know it's not like if it's a full MMA match, you know, you have to train grappling, you got to train deep grappling defense, right. take down defense. Right. Is it kind of is it kind of going getting offered to do a kickbox? Is it a little bit less? preparation since that is kind of what your main background is yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it's a lot easier uh on my mind <laughs> uh having to remember uh a lot of this stuff uh jujitsu wise uh defensive jujitsu then wrestling then doing uh taekwondo and muay thai when you get close because uh mma is a lot different from like boxing or kickboxing or any other sport i would say because it, it involves everything, you know, you have to be good or at least have some bit of knowledge everywhere, whether you're on the floor against the cage, whether you're striking in the middle, it, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of different martial arts mixed into one. So this is a lot easier, yes, because I'm only training my striking right now. So it's like, I can really focus on something I'm really well at, like I'm really good at striking. I, in martial arts, I think that's probably the, my favorite part of doing MMA is striking. I love to kick box. Hey, so just tell us about uh, the fight coming up. Uh, I mean, do you do you know who your opponent is now? And if you do, do you know have you how do you uh, have you been able to find anything on him? Are you one of those people who, who looked up their opponent, or you kind of go in there blank uh, with no plan? Or well, yeah, just tell us about all that stuff. Well, well, uh, something I've learned uh, actually that you asked me that is that uh, the last few fights I felt like I was training for an opponent for a name and kind of being immersed in focusing on who it is that I'm fighting. And I think that's the beauty of this opportunity here being contacted and almost uh, a little bit last minute to fight is because I didn't, I was already ready, you know, like I was already training every day with my brothers. I was already training, doing pad work, running, you know, biking, cycling, uh, was already training almost every day, even though I was working, you know, I'm, I'm every day after full time, my full time shift, I would come home, we would all meet up at my apartment, we'll train, you know, so I was already ready. And I feel like not having the stress of focusing on a certain person was, uh, is kind of relieving for my brain. I still don't know, I'll know by the end of the uh, tonight, the guy's name and everything. I uh, didn't get to speak to the promoter since uh, we spoke on Friday, I believe uh, he called me. Uh, so he's gonna call me later on tonight. I uh, probably definitely know by tonight. Um, but I don't feel like like it really matters at all, honestly. I feel as if it, I'm going in there to test myself. 
more so because it's just me against me. And I say that to say, when you, when you begin to look at other opponents and stuff, and you, you kind of start to give them a little bit of respect. And for me, I feel like you don't really haven't earned my respect for me to respect anybody as a fighter until I go in there and, you know, we physically fight because at that point I'll be giving you abilities and powers that you don't may not actually physically have, you know, by just meditating on it and, and thinking of you as an opponent. Uh, I feel like myself is the only, is my only opponent. I have to go in there and keep my mind focused and just practice what I've been training over the last few months. And I want to just test to see where I'm at, basically. Uh, Do you know the, uh, what the, uh, since it is amateur, is there any specific rules? Is it like certain amount of rounds, certain amount of minutes? Uh, yeah, it's uh, K1, I believe it's three, three minute rounds or, uh, yeah. And I believe it's uh, clinching, knees, I think everything but elbows. Okay, and uh, is headgear, or are you guys gonna be wearing any I believe, I, I believe we will have headgear, I'm not sure. Uh, I, th I know we'll have shin guards. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have elbow gear. I'm not sure about head gear also. Okay. Uh, and I know that from, from, from some of the videos that you uh, sent me uh, over Instagram, you're a guy who likes to knock out people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, I love I to mean, strike. I, do you, I mean, I know you don't know who your opponent is, but is that what you're all... Is that what you're always thinking about? You know, just trying to get that knockout as quick as possible? Or will a fight like this, especially because you haven't competed in a while, do you want, maybe want to almost even test yourself to see, okay, I still have it in me to go three minutes, three uh, nine minutes for three rounds? Or, yeah, you're just going to look knock him out just to, you know, make sure you still got the, uh, the old strength that it hasn't worked. Absolutely, Andrew. That is the, uh, <laughs> that is the goal here. Yeah. <laughs> I I would like I want to see uh, every time I fight I want to see my opponents fall before my knees I want to know that I am the better man at that moment and afterwards all respect to my opponents but once you sign uh, a form or a contract or whatever it is to you know fight I go in there with the intentions to knock you out and um, I'm hoping you do the same because that's what this sport's about. And then afterwards, I do respect my opponents absolutely to the fullest. And now what happens after this fight? Now, is this a thing where I guess the promoter says, hey, if you win this fight, we'll maybe do another fight down the line? Or do you have anything else lined up that you can that you can mention? Or yeah, do you know what, what you're uh, well, this fight? Well, well uh, because of the COVID thing, like I said, the promotions have been pretty slow. Um, I'm hoping after this fight to just take the rest of the year off and uh, just enjoy the holidays because Thanksgiving mm -hmm. will follow and then Christmas and then the new year. So I will probably, you know, spend time with my, with my family uh, here training. I'll still be training, of course. <laughs> you know, that's something I do on the daily. Um, but I I'll probably take some time, spend with my family, you know, see some friends, family, and uh, then probably next year, I'm hoping by the beginning of next year, uh, promotions will be open and I'm looking to uh, go fight for some titles, uh, hopefully. Um, any promotions, I'll be open to any promotions. I'm, I'm ready to, uh, you know, <laughs> start. Do you think, well, I don't know how, how it's discussed um, with your coaches, but when do you think you'll be ready to make, go, to make the step into pro, to put the amateurs behind you and go into pro? Do you have like a timetable for that? Yeah, I'm hoping by this year coming, uh, next year, uh, I'll be turning 24 and hopefully, I think I'll be going pro by maybe the end of the year, hopefully. Um, we'll see, uh, I'm not sure whether I'll get a uh, contract, whether I'll have to, uh, you know, just look for some promotions, whatever it will be, you know, uh, it won't matter the journey, you know, I'm just here for the process. I, I just want to enjoy it. And, you know, I love to fight, so I'm open to, whichever you know whether it's i get a promotion whether i have to go out there and find uh fights eventually people will uh you know see that i i i'm somebody serious about this sport and that i'm trying to uh, reach the pinnacle of the sport also and when you say the pinnacle i'm assuming you mean your, your goal eventually go to ufc and uh fi fight for them yeah yeah absolutely man i want to fight the, the the best in the world eventually yes i want to I want to prove to myself, not anybody else, just to myself, that I am the uh, best mixed martial artist on the planet. And I put in work daily for hours and hours and hours. And I'm very focused on this. This is something I take very serious. It's something I, I eventually want to feed my family and my friends with. And uh, 
you know, this is this is this is it for me. You know, I, I love this sport. This is what I love to do. I love to fight. Um, and it's a it's a very authentic way of expression for me. So uh, it's something you probably never see me stop doing. So, yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what do your friends and family think? I mean, this is a very physical sport. People get hurt. People sometimes retire because of the injuries. Have they been supportive? Have they been more, don't do this for too long? Or not supportive? <laughs> what, has, what, has there been, uh, what has been the overall reaction between your friends and family? Uh, uh, I, I get <laughs> I get reactions from <laughs> different reactions, you know, from from all of them. You know, my 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 parents wasn't really so much in agreement with it at first at all. Uh, my dad definitely didn't. I don't think he really <laughs> supported it, you know, because they, they they thought I was kind of a a bright person that I should be doing something else. But for me, I don't think I was meant to do anything else. You know, this is what I love to do, man. This is this is this is me. So. Um, my friends support it, you know, they, you know, they support it. Uh, some, some of my friends don't support it. You know, they think, like I said, they, that I could be doing something better. Uh, but, you know, I feel like this is, this is, this is what I want to do, man. I really enjoy this. And uh, I think I, I do, I think I'm very good at it. So mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's probably well, something I won't stop for right now. Good to know. I should have asked at the beginning, but for this, uh, for this uh, fight coming up, uh, you don't, are you cutting weight or you can basically go in there at your walk around rate since amateur? Or are you doing any cutting of that sort? Uh, actually, I've been able to uh, gain uh, a little bit of weight on this fight. I think uh, it's at 160 pounds and I normally fight uh, MMA. I was fighting at 145 pounds. So I, I definitely uh, put on some, some weight. Uh, um, I'm thankful I don't have to cut. And something I actually realized is that I wasn't really too too much of a big fan of the weight cutting, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like it affects your brain and your body in a way that isn't good. And, uh, you know, cause I'm young at the time when I was doing it and, and cutting weight, I'm young. So it's like, I don't really feel the, uh, the full effects of it or whatnot, but I do not feel like as vital and energetic as I normally am, regardless of whether I'm eating a healthy diet or, whether I'm doing it the the right way or not, I just feel like it's not something that we as humans are supposed to be doing. Um, I I I like not having to cut weight <laughs> this time around for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the future, uh, depending on how I feel, because this will probably be the first time I'm competing at this this weight. I've actually fought fighters uh, at uh, promotions that were heavier than me by like six or seven pounds. Cause I mean, amateur MMA, I didn't know that you can have almost an eight pound uh, weight difference. So I fought uh, fighters that, that were, uh, you know, sometimes eight or nine pounds heavier than me. I think this would be the first time maybe I'll be fighting somebody around my uh, weight class, like uh, with the same weight. Cause I think we're gonna weigh in the same day and uh, it just feels good not having to cut weight. I feel powerful. I still, I feel strong. I feel motivated. Uh, you know, I feel focused. I feel very focused for sure. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to go in there and, uh, you know, like I said, express myself. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I want to give you a last opportunity to, uh, I don't know, plug any social media you have. I don't know if you have any sponsors. Uh, any last statements you want to say about this fight coming up? The floor is yours. Well, uh, about the fight, the last thing I'll say is uh, this isn't really so much about my opponent. Uh, it's for me. I'm going to uh, test myself and see where I'm at. I've been training. And I've been training with my family and my friends and uh, we've been training hard. So um, I wanna go and see where I'm at. Uh, and that's pretty much what this is, uh, just gauging myself for, for the end of the year, testing myself uh, going into the new year to see exactly where I stand uh, and to see where I need to make improvements at and uh, where I can sharpen myself up at. You, know, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Black Lion MMA, uh, Facebook, Black Lion MMA or Jordan Drayton. Uh, same thing on Twitter, Black Lion uh, MMA. And uh, for the people that want to see you fight, it'll, it'll be available online. Uh, Bron I have it as Bronx Cage Fight. Is that what it's called? Bronx Cage? Yes, yes, yes. It'll be available on uh, Eventbrite for, I think, $40 or $30 per pay per view. And in person, it's uh, $100 a seat. Okay. Due to okay. COVID, you know, there's a. Uh, it's hard to get even venues set up. So, you know, uh, seating is limited, uh, but tickets are $100 per seat, correct? And, uh, yeah, so if you are in the Bronx or New York City area, uh, try to go to a show if you can. If not, just sit at home or what, uh, what, however you want to see your fight. But um, 
uh, Jordan, I appreciate you talking to me. But I'm glad we got to finally do a uh, sit down interview about a fight coming up. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, I, I know, I, I hope we can talk again. You know, whenever your ni- next fight comes up, I hope you do well in this fight. Uh, and uh, yeah, man, you know, it's glad to always talk to the next, the next future uh, fighters that are going to be the next generation. It's always good to talk to them before they become famous because, right, right. because it's always good to know where they come from, and also before uh, they become too famous to talk to any of these. But yeah, again, thank you so much, Jordan. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Alex, for having me. I appreciate you. No problem. Take care. Stay safe and healthy, man. Thank you. You too. God bless.